but so yeah, so like uh, um, I mean, in the fourteen in the fifteen hundreds, there is a, a rabbi that talks about how in the Tower of Babel they were trying to they were scared of another flood and they were trying to leave orbit and they were trying to construct a spaceship to get to the moon. Pretty crazy to be talking about that, like in the, you know, in the 1500s, uh, the, the Bible, uh, the Talmud talks about, um, uh, Atlantis. Um, uh, so, you know, there, there's, there's, there's always a conversation there. Like the, the, the Talmud gives an, gives an example of, um, what happens if a woman goes into a ritual bath and there was still semen there from someone else and she gets pregnant? Or what happens if you feed an elephant a straw and on, on the backside comes out a basket? Or what if there was a man that could have a pen in every one of his fingers and he could twirl them as he writes? And you could see the rabbis were trying to stretch their imagination to like, what does a printer look like? What does like uh, IVF look like? As far as they can. Maimonides talks about like, you know, yeah. a thousand years ago, like a plane, like a, a metal ship in the sky flying. So uh, I, I think that it also, that was a very smart move to try to go to the extreme, to try to really cover all your bases, so to speak. M my fear is that while I believe Judaism is uh, a phenomenal and inspired, a divinely inspired operating system, it is time for an update. Okay. One, has, one has to do so with care, of course. Uh, but it's, uh, and like I said, r releasing or, or, or removing our uh, exile ex exoskeleton is very, very difficult, both politically, culturally, emotionally. So um, it's very, it's, it's hard to do that. But a, a part of it is definitely uh, dialogue with our Christian brothers and our Muslim brothers. Because otherwise, it's 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 not going to work. And Maimonides, this was censored for many many years. Now, no longer. Uh, he gives a beautiful passage talking about ultimately we not, we do not know the path of God, and His ways are only His ways are not ours. But he sees Jesus and the Muslim. Uh, well, he says, yeah, Jesus and the Muslim who came after him, uh, aka Muhammad, are ultimately path makers for God, right? Now, that is a very, very powerful statement uh, to say something like that. Uh, there are rabbis that talk about how we could potentially even uh, accept Muhammad as a prophet, as long as, again, there's some uh, kosher moves being done. But, but um, that's the that, language that's the language that's used about Peterson a lot. What do you mean? As a path towards, you know, like a path maker. Yeah, yeah, as a path maker, for sure. So I, I so I, you know, I, 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 when Jethro wants to leave the uh, the camp, he's like, guys, I'm done with this. So Moses tells him, bro, you can't go anywhere. Well, he's not his bro, he's his father-in-law. Dad, you can't go anywhere. And he says, why? He's like, because you will be like eyes for us in the desert. Now, there's different interpretations. Some were saying, like, you can't go because you know all our secrets at this point. And if you get caught, you could be used as eyes for the enemy to spy on us. That's one interpretation. Or there's other interpretation, which is, your foresight, your ideas are still needed. I still need you. Like, and you could look at it's flipping Moses, right? When, when, when uh, Jethro tells him, like, yo, your system's not working, you will surely welt if you can keep this going. Moses could have been, I was just talking to God, I'm Moses, okay? Like, I can handle this. Mm. Nevertheless, there's a recognition, which is you are a high priest, you have a certain structure of how you think this makes sense to do. And I need that. I need, so comes Jordan Peterson and says, I'll build this for you bottom up from evolutionary psychology. I'll give you a path, which you can now be eyes and walk through. And that path will allow you to uh, avoid uh, the Amalekites, avoid different issues. Damn, that's just, <laughs> that's so wild, man. That's just so wild because I mean, or, huh? In like, like, it sounds like foolish. Or like No, like a mate, like, no, it's so integral. It's so oh, like, I was like, you oh, know, no. being too wild. No, 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 no. Wild is is cool, I guess, or or interesting, or you know, um, not as wild as in you're, you're getting you too. You're not, get, you're not getting too far out in the weeds. That's not what I'm saying. Like, no, like that makes sense. It just makes sense to me. And you know, whenever I was trying to have conversations, the few that I did try to have about this, it was kind of like, hey, he doesn't. You know, he's no Orthodox Christian or any, you know, like that whole thing or something. And I was just like, I, there is, he's doing something that, and again, even 
even his caricature and, he, and there's reasons for his current caricature, you know, uh, politically and all that kind of stuff like that. It makes people hard to see this, which I experienced when I, he was in, um, Little Rock, Arkansas, right before I went to Jonathan Majot's symbolic world. And I decided to go see him. I, I kind of have been on this pil- This is part of a pilgrimage. It's part of a spiritual pilgrimage related to all of this. Um, getting into the space, starting to have this conversation. And when I went, I was expecting, oh, there might be, I might bump shoulders with people in Arkansas that I feel like I can have this conversation with. And it did not leave that event feeling that way. I felt like when I left that event that most of the people were there to see the caricature of Jordan Peterson. Not that there wasn't people there. There was, you know, 10,000 people there or something, but not that... Not that there weren't, but I just didn't bump into him like I was hoping to. I don't know if that makes sense. No, I, I mean, I want to see him wrestle with God. I don't mm. I like I'm like when he talks to destiny and you feel like there's like verbal diarrhea where like he has to like there's first of all, I feel like since his uh, his quote unquote resurrection, so to speak, right, coming like, you know, his phase three or coming back from his crazy sickness. He has a sense of urgency where like every idea has to be like spoken out, said, explored. So like I want to be like, bro, take a breather for a second, like breathe, relax. Also, you're flipping Jordan Peterson. Have the podcast for three hours then. You know what I mean? Like, why does it need to feel like it's like you're rushed? But mm. I feel like he's really spreading out his wings. But when he's or, or like, you know, shooting out to all directions. But when he is walking, and again, what you saw in the biblical series, walking across that stage and sort of discussing with us. He's like, like, I'm, this is what I'm working out. That was where, I mean, that's him and his prime. That's, that was, that was that Jordan was, Hall's comment about feeling like there's Jordan Peterson talking and then there's Jordan Peterson, to, to use the Greek, talking like through the logos in a way with this wisdom and this, uh, this connection to that spirit of that. I mean, but so that too, I, what, one thing that knocked me, um, Knocked me off, uh, you know, out of my chair, so to speak, when I was young, much younger, uh, when I was reading the story of uh, of uh, uh, Balaam, Bilam, the, the 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 prophet. I don't know if you, I don't know if if if, if Is that you the, uh, Balaam's donkey. Exactly, Balaam. Right. So I'm reading the story. First of all, no Israelite is in the story, right? The sages tell us Moses wrote. Uh, 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 you know, wrote the wrote the Torah and also wrote this specific story through through uh, in, uh, through uh, prophecy. But in the middle of our most holy text, we suddenly have a story about this prophet who's not a Jew that's out to get us, and he's a very powerful prophet, and he's having a conversation with God. What? Who's this dude? Why is he having a conversation? And our sages tell us that we have a saying which uh, there. There never was amongst Israel someone as great as Moses. The qualification is in Israel, but in the world, there was someone as great as Moses. That's Bella. And the idea was God says, like, it's not fair that I only give a prophet like Moses to the Israelites. I'm also going to give the world an option as well. Here you go. Here's uh, Darth Vader, so to speak. Right? You have you could you could use this. However, how does he want to use the force? How does he want to participate? And you see different examples between him and Abraham. Abraham wakes up in the morning and uh, uh, gets his donkey prepared. The same terminology is used with Bill when he wakes up in the morning and gets his donkey prepared. And there's a sense of where we seem like both of them have this potential. One is using it for evil, so to speak. Now, Bill sees the encampment of the Israelites and it's properly oriented. And he says he tries to curse them, but only a blessing comes out. And he mm. says, as long as you're properly oriented, you can't be affected. And it's as if God was telling, hey, Israelites, I'm having a conversation with the rest of the world all the time. You should understand there's other movies happening. There's the Israelite movie that you guys are the heroes of. Great. I understand. But if you switch a different channel, there's, as the prophet says, there's Egypt, my people. There's Assyria, my, my, uh, uh, the, the work of my hands. So God is, has a different relationship. And so much so that there's other prophets that I'm having a relationship with. Well, as long as you keep you're self-oriented, you do not have to be worried about getting affected by them. Of course, they fail when Bilam brings in the, the different uh, Moabite women, and that obviously leads to disaster. Um, but but 
it, it was a indication to me, which is God is speaking to everyone. God is interesting in a conversation with everyone as well. Yes, I have the, I'm, I'm in season 4,000 of the Jewish story, so to speak, but there's other, there's other channels happening. And again, the no hide version is so to speak, Netflix, right? It's all open. It's for you to see. You could curate your, your channel. Yeah, man. That's. And so here we are, you know, and here we are. And I, um, this, this journey, I don't, well, I guess one question that was kind of bubbling up during this is I feel like, I don't know, cause I'm only three months deep into proper TLC you know, world. And, and it sounds like you said two or three years that you've been kind of in this dialogue. And it seemed like there was some, there've been different times where there's been um, tension, I guess, within the community or around. So do you, do you, if you could describe what's, how you're seeing things currently in this kind of subculture that we're bouncing around in, what would you say? So I think like we're in like, it, we've definitely turned a page, I could say, since I came. I think there was like last year, there was another moment where, who is TLC? What is TLC? How do you spell TLC? Like, what, who are we? What are we doing? So there was that moment and that came up again a few months ago. Um, but this is different than that. And I'll get back to that drama, which is this time around, there wasn't someone got up and said, TLC is this. But there was a more sort of, refined, uh, mature discussion about that. And you could say like, um, what's his name again? I'm forgetting his channel. He, he did that post of like the different flotillas, so to speak. And he had like this different, um, not the oh, name. It was uh, a waves of obsession. Waves of obsession. Exactly. So that video, even seeing like a visualization of like, Oh, there's like a lot of different like groups happening over here. And the fact that these other channels popped up, you among them, for example, and other channels became like a little more awake, like, um, what's it called? Agapologia. Yeah. So, so all of those little bubbling up showed like a new, a riverification, new blood, a, a new conversation. I really think there was like, there was a shift over there. I think the fact that also the ball dropped, so to speak, with regards to John Verveke and Jonathan Peugeot, we are not building community. And comes Paul and says, like, I'm building community, right? <laughs> so there, there was a very stark difference because ultimately he was like, community, we're building TLC, TLC, TLC. There are TLC adjacents. And I think like Jordan, like Jordan Hall talking to you, that's a data point, right? Like you were talking about like, you know, there's a status hierarchy and all that. And like, I, and I love that when he was like, uh, your, uh, you know, your fans or your views, you're like, I have no, like, you know, I, I don't have it. <laughs> but uh, um, I, I think those uh, uh, those are elements where, you know, he's coming into the conversation right now. And there is like, there's the whole uh, um, Sam Tiedemann going on uh, that uh, podcast. I'm forgetting that guy's name right now, but that's another, uh, you know, what's his name? Ortland? We Was it Ortland? Not Ortland. Is he Christian? Christian. Yes, obviously. Gavin uh, Ortland maybe was one, or um, I don't know who else. It was... Either way, it was a bigger channel, so to speak, mm -hmm. or like very much Christian YouTube. And it comes in Sam's and has a conversation. I was talking about how he probably is not used to having a conversation like that, which like came with a lot of TLC energy, which is like, I'm here to play. You know, like I'm very chill, good faith, uh, uh, you know, built in steel manning. So I think that's starting to really, uh, you know, there's, there's a certain jargon that's being built up. Uh, uh, the, 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 um, the the chat the live chat is really that old like own little subculture is really really bubbling up so i think you're you're seeing a much a much more uh, uh richer and a communal version of it from what i experienced let's say a, like a year ago which was uh so 